Hi, I'm JR. I play Mizzer Snowfang, an ancient oath paladin. Mizzer is a bra, which is a race unique to Vrath. Uh, Mizzer was taken to the Feywild as a cub, and as a result, he's much more carefree. Hi, I'm Ashley. I play Miria Stonefury, an Eldritch Knight. Uh, she has a complex family history that mostly revolves around death, which has hardened her outlook on life. Hi, I'm Jerry. I'm playing Tristan Bestor, a.k.a. Stormmane. He's a Tempest cleric, uh, raised up among a group of mercenaries, been kind of hardened to the world, and kind of skews his opinions of the people around him and their motives. Hi, I'm David. I play Jarell Magnuson, a Circle of the Land Druid who has an interesting relationship with time, giving him a unique perspective on things. And I'm Jared, a.k.a. DMF, and this is Dark Hounds, a 360 D&D actual play series brought to you by Game Master Studio. Okay, so we're going to go into a cutscene. We cut back to, again, cutscenes are for players, not characters, just kind of more thematic kind of uh, uh, approach. So we cut to the scene where, the, the room where you guys were all in before, where you all woke up out of your comas. Ascot's still in there with a bunch of uh, people, different, uh, again, casters, clerics, uh, wizards, physicians, witch doctors, all kinds of, you know, different forms of healers. Several people casting spells over him. Uh, Ascot appears to be on the brink of death. He looks like he's quickly fading. Uh, you see a well, one caster over in the corner, over a desk, kind of casting spells. Someone, you know, is bringing over some some blood, presumably ascots. Sets it down. Some more spells are going off. Uh, then all of a sudden, ascots. You see, ask. You know, we we to go into the close up of ascots' face. We see his eyes pop open, completely covered over in black. Very, you know, demon supernatural kind of thing. You know, just one hundred percent black eyes. And he just stands up. Or not stand, I'm sorry, it doesn't stand up. He just sits up in his, his cot, perfect posture. Uh, several people try to kind of uh, put their hand on on him and just assist him a little bit. Whoa, whoa come on, come on, hey, Ascot, it's, it's okay. Just, just, whoa, just, are you okay? Are you okay? At this point, his eyes aren't black. They were black for a moment when he, they first, um, when he first, first opened them, but they appear to be normal now. Oh, yes, no, no, I'm fine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just, what's all the fuss about? Whoa, I mean, we just, we... We, we thought we lost you there for a moment. You know, you were you've been you've been in a coma for months, and the others, the others recovered hours ago. We, we you died. We were able to pull you back, but we, we no 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 oh no. <laughs> you have me confused. I think I'm fine. It's okay. We're fine. The uh, ascot goes to stand up. And several of the people in the room kind of put their hand on his shoulder, trying to keep him like, no, 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 you should stay sitting. And he just stands up as if no one's even touching him. He starts to walk over towards the door. Whoa, ask, Ascot, look, look at me. He turns around and looks over towards uh, the people in the room. His eyes glaze black over black again, like, what? We're fine. Turns back towards him. What, what's going on? Turns towards the door, and instead of even reaching for the doorknob to try to open the door, he just... The door just like shatters open in front of him. It's kind of the door starts to swing open. It's supposed to pull. You can you know, you know, looking at the door frame. The door is supposed to open in. It opens outward. <laughs> it kind of cracks itself in half and then just shatters into a bunch of pieces. Coming out of the cutscene, this is all happening right now. You are all downstairs in the tavern. You all of a sudden hear this door explode open upstairs, <laughs> and you hear a bunch of people. Uh, shouting from the room, it's Ascot, it's Ascot, something's wrong. Someone, Ascot, what are you doing? What's going on? I'm up out of my seat. <laughs> I am still sitting. <laughs> you hear hey! slow and deliberate but soft footsteps coming down the stairs. As soon as I see Ascot, I'll kick off the divine sense. Yes, so you see Ascot coming down the stairs. Oh, my God. Kicks off tree. <laughs> <laughs> Divine sense, and it's just... That is no longer the Ascot. There's a giant neon sign with an arrow pointing down. Fiend! <laughs> Which I say, that is no longer the Ascot we remember. I yes, think Paladin. I see what you mean. 
Everyone loves a tattletale paladin. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> he walks over. Look, ask not. Sit down. Let's have a conversation. Well, hello all again. Nice to see you. It's been too long. Mm. Hours even. Growl at him. Yes, yes. <laughs> Just thought I'd come and uh, see how you all were before I departed. You're not going to stay and join our merry little band? Well, I wasn't planning on staying, but I suppose I can just for a moment. You could play the bongos. The, uh, yes, excellent. Uh, just pulls out the chair, sits down with perfect posture again. Like his his mannerisms are all off. You know, normally Ascot would he had decent posture, but. He just has, currently has like just this perfect posture back, constantly straight. He's, as he sits down in the seat, he's almost gravity defying, like sitting down completely with his legs, his back staying straight the whole time. So, thank you all for saying no. Appreciate y'all being a bunch of jerks. Well, you said but, you only needed one, so yes, what are you complaining about? I can't say he was my first pick, to be honest, but Ascot will do. I know, Nerea is so lovely sometimes. <laughs> she is, isn't she? She would have been Where's, one of the top picks, but Ascot will do. Are his eyes normal, or are they black? Uh, they kind of flicker back and forth. Like, he, he, most of the time, he they're in normal form, but every now and then you see them kind of flash black and then flash back. But it seems like he's doing it on purpose. It's not an involuntary thing. It's like he's kind of just showing off and kind of like, ha ha. So, um, yes. Uh, we're Ascot now. Ascot is me. I am Ascot. And, and, and we're great. So I just wanted to say thanks again. And also before I leave, I wanted to just uh, let you all in on a little secret. Oh, I love secrets. Yeah, so even though you all rejected me, and you all think you uh, pulled one over on me, and Ascot's the one that now has to to bear the weight, surprise, guess what? There's a little piece of me in all of you still. And those fools upstairs, they didn't save you. Well, I mean, I suppose it depends on how you look at it, but they kind of boned you. Yeah, you remember all those little trinkets that that little imp gave you? Yeah, well, they're all permanently a part of you now. And they're all a little piece of me. But they still do what they're... Oh, they still do exactly what they're supposed to do. Fantastic. But, yeah, so... The imp and broke the contract. I know. <laughs> Good thing we know where he lives. So yeah, as you kind of inspect the items, uh, you had a mall that wasn't on your persons, but he, he snaps his fingers, and all of a sudden, you know, the mall's on your back, and as you kind of inspect the ring, and you inspect your bracers, and you look down at your armor, you see it kind of rippling. It's like this kind of fluidy ripple. And you all feel the item, your various items kind of absorb into your skin you kind of see it like ripple across your you know, like your like your ring kind of disappears into your skin as if almost like it's uh, an ink or something under your flesh you kind of see it ripple underneath your skin like the first couple layers of skin and then pulls back you know towards your finger and pulls out of your flesh and reforms back into the ring you feel the same thing kind of go up and down your arm back into your bracers you feel like it just kind of disappears underneath your underclothing and then pops back out out again anyways the armor for your uh, maul, you feel it pull into your back and you feel it trickle down your spine and then down you know, like your arm bone and, and then and it pull, starts to pull up out of your palm. It's first just the, the, the handle and the pummel and it starts to form up towards the maul and then it just pulls back down and just reforms on your back. Hmm. So Weird. you can all thank me for that later. You've been given an impressive gift, and you're welcome. I did not just say thank you. Yes, you're welcome. I know. They um just as the imp promised, they all do exactly what they're supposed to do. By the way, when you were in a coma before you all kind of went to uh before you got lost, let's say, in your memories there. <laughs> These uh, items consumed the original, so sorry. Uh, yeah. 
There's a lot more to them, but I don't want to spoil all the fun. I've spoiled enough as it is. Uh, yeah. So, without further ado, does this does this does this mean we can talk to you? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much. Ask not. Can you hear me? Can, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm sitting at the same table as you. I hear you just fine, buddy. It works, guys. <laughs> we got this. In case we ever need you, friend. Yeah. I'm gonna go now. Ta-ta. Stands up again. Perfect posture. Turns towards the door. Starts to walk towards the door. Oh, and by the way... Clovis is on his way. Orion didn't feel like breaking that bad news on you quite yet, but... I assume, sorry. I assume Orion's Oops. probably standing in the room somewhere. At this yeah, at this point, he's standing there. He's <laughs> kind of like, uh... Yeah. He's kind of quietly motioning towards, like, some guards that are slowly, like, making his way... Their way is over towards uh, Ascot. <laughs> That's gonna work. <laughs> So, ta-ta for now. TGFN. Yes, uh, ciao. Uh, I'm sure we'll see each other again soon enough. Sooner than I'd like, probably. <laughs> Count on it. We'll yeah. see you then. Yeah, I knew you'd all have that kind of uh, thought. So, bye. Turns towards the door. Doesn't even motion towards the door. Just disappears in a flashlight. And just go. Potter, I need a long stretch of fabric. A long stretch of fabric? Is yeah, long, white if possible. Okay. <laughs> I'll uh, be right back. I'll immediately go over to the bar and start waiting for that. He comes out with a long roll of fabric. Don't you guys do whatever you want. <laughs> and I'll, I'll grab like... Uh, Paint or something. Paint. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right. And I'll just I'll start doing stuff on. on okay. This thing. Welcome, Clovis. <laughs> <laughs> See the W start forming. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Orion walks down and approaches you all. So that. Didn't go quite as I was hoping. Banishment would have gone a long way. Perhaps I was informed we tried that, but maybe it just wasn't a strong enough casting. Uh, hmm. So, like you said, Clovis is headed this way. Do you think that was important to share before now? Well, I was going to tell you in the morning he's not due to be here by our estimations for a few days. So, yeah. So, so I can go down to the local banner shop and actually get this commissioned. I suppose. <laughs> if that's important to you to do. I mean, the one thing that we do get to take advantage of on Clovis's behalf is the fact he's the walking death knight. So, we usually have time from him going to point A to point B to be aware of him coming. And usually people just leave. Um, that would be a good recommendation yeah. for this town. Mm -hmm. He had been going under the radar for the last couple decades, though. We weren't aware of that little uh, shadow, cloaky, old man hunched over trick that he pulled on recently with you guys. But... Due to the information that we gathered from you, we're now aware. So, go team. Uh, yeah. So, the, yeah, the war, the big topic of the war room we had scheduled for tomorrow was Clovis is coming. Surprise. Um. Well, it, the surprise will be for him now. Yeah, that's it. And now, apparently, on the the topic headers, we have Ascot's possessed by a powerful uh, devil. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so terribly powerful. <laughs> yes, Drill doesn't seem phased. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's standard, really. Uh, so... I'm also a little drunk, so that's probably... That's probably taking the edge off, yes. 
as intended. So, um, Potter, ladder. <laughs> I'm gonna say that we let everyone sober up and adjourn and see each other in the morning as previously planned. I'm gonna try really hard to not panic about the Ascot situation because we have a lot on our plate already with uh, Clovis. And <laughs> I'll slide down the ladder, pop open the front door. Doesn't look like he's murdering the town. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a different, there's alarms for that situation. So that's why I was kind of <laughs> holding my breath there for a moment. Hopefully they wouldn't start going off. <laughs> there's alarms for that situation. <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, try to get a good night's sleep. <laughs> Sober up. I'll have some berries for you in the morning. Whenever I get a spare chance to, I'll be practicing the whole trying to make it form in my hand, and get better with actually using them all so that okay. I can make it go to the hand from the back. And okay. Obviously, yep. if that's something, I'll start practicing it. Mm-hmm. That is definitely something you can learn to control and manipulate. If you want to make some concentration checks for me. Oh man. Constitution modifier. Uh, 19. Do I add the plus two to me? You add the plus two to you for saves. This okay, is... so 19. Yeah. Uh, 17. One more. And 22. Boom. You are able to, with an 80% efficiency rate, pull it to your hand at will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then it doesn't quite comes out fire forehead. off quite It comes right. out my forehead. <laughs> well, sometimes you feel it like, kind of start to go down your arm and then it just instantly quickly pulls back to like, re, uh, like rubber bands back to your back. Uh, for anyone else interested in trying to work on being able to... Uh, dismiss, so to speak, or call, they can also, you're all able to do that to some degree. It's I'm, most useful for uh, uh, for Mizzer and has some applications, obviously, for Neria as well. The ring, obviously, is kind of moot. The bracer is mostly moot. I'm going to actually be using my... I'm not married! I'm trying to use... I am! <laughs> um, channel Divinity to just pump like raw divine energy into it. Okay. Basically trying to burn it off you, so to speak. Purif purify it or yeah, get rid of it. Just destroy it. <laughs> I have to work on another plan. figure something out. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so when you use the channel divinity and try to basically yeah. you, you'll uh, burn it away or, or yeah, uh, knock it off you or, or whatever the, you know, your you know, whatever you hope might come of it. No. Fear. You no see fear. it's like normally when it's in its form, you know, like when it pulls in and out, you know, if you play with that at all, like it goes into like kind of like this liquidy kind of form. But when it's in its, you know, item form, it is very much solid, it isn't an item, it's not liquid, but as you're trying to like burn it away with your uh, channel divinity, it definitely goes back into fluid form and it ha looks like it's in pain to some degree, like it's definitely not happy about the situation, like you see like little pieces of uh, like uh, almost like little tiny like hairs and tentacles kind of coming up off of it, but as soon as your channel divinity has uh, run its course, it just snaps right back to and it's fine. And on the plus side, somewhere out there, ask not is hopefully going like, ow. <laughs> There's a ringing in my ear right now. <laughs> it's like that white noise. Mop, mop. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have a plan for the morning. Okay. So we'll fade to black. And then we'll take a vote on whether or not we want to continue or pick up again in two weeks. I mean, we, we can vote. 
Yeah. Okay. An hour and 15, if you want. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Like I said, like, it's one of those where the technical difficulties was getting on my nerves. I didn't know if I was getting anyone else's nerves enough that they wanted to like, let's just try again in a couple weeks. Mm. Could go either way. Okay. So we'll get a little bit more. <laughs> hey, John. Ah. I don't know. My, my empathetic nerves has gone. I'm sociopath, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't know when you guys did. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's just apparently a trick they use to detect sociopaths. That empathetic response. <laughs> I think it's just because I'm aware of that fact now that that's what I'm like, ha ha ha! Immune to you, are you? <laughs> of all the bodily functions, be glad it's yawning is the one that's contagious. <laughs> so, yes. So you all wake up the next morning. Some of you more hungover than others. Um, Some of you not hungover at all. You you may or not, you may or may not, like, find, you, you may come across me. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how your mornings. Uh, so I will be swapping out spells for remove curse. I need water. Okay. <laughs> and I will try that for the bracers. All right. Actually, before we jump into this, I need to grab something out of my backpack right behind me. Because I forgot to put it in my computer, but I have it written down over here. <laughs> 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 Alrighty. I have what's going on. <laughs> Sponsor. <laughs> I'm fairly certain this isn't going on up on YouTube. Because I know Jared is so egotistical that he wouldn't do anything that has a shot where he's not in the frame. Yeah, that's it. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's basically dead air. Well. <laughs> A fairy, a dwarf, a short human, and a very tall human in plain armor. minutes of awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. And now for something completely different.
actually have a good chance this week. But might destroy me last week. Okay. So you wake up the next morning and you prepare remove curse. And use it. And use it. Okay. You go to you cast remove curse and attempt to remove the curse from the bracers. Bound to you for all intents and purposes. And I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw. I know, right? Wisdom, cleric, crazy. Uh I'm going to assume I don't get the bonus from the bracers. Yeah, you do. Still. Yep. Okay, in that case, 25. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All of a sudden you hear, Ow! Would you stop that? Oh my god! Please, stop! Trying to take me off, would you? Well, sounds like it's time for another remove curse. <laughs> <laughs> Burns through all of his like <laughs> third level slots. Third level slots just to do that. That'd be hilarious. You're gonna do another remove curse? Yeah. Okay. Do wisdom's DC or uh, wisdom save through. Oh, that one was not as good. It's only a 12. So this time you hear, I said, stop it! And you instantly have a headache and kind of drop to a knee. Your nose bleeds a little bit. I am a part of you now, okay? Look, neither of us like it. This is where we just have to move forward, okay? Wasn't my idea. Surely wasn't your idea. Just the way things are. For more spells. <laughs> He's a holy cleric. He is evil undead bracers. Together, they fight crime. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, since there, since he's yelling at you through them, he could be your buddy cop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I what are you sticking like, me? Oh, oh left, what? Like what? No! With a, with a hollow. <laughs> Like just constantly, like like just bless water and just constantly just soak your hands in them. Like. <laughs> so yes, you hear this voice uh, start to go on like so. Like okay, we're stuck with each other. Let's just accept it. All right. I'm gonna try not to bug you. You try not to hurt me, and we can just be. will everything will be just fine. Does that sound like a plan? I have a third remove curse for the day. Let's hit him with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One more wisdom save. It's been pretty well established that Tristan's kind of stubborn anyway. Um, so that is a 17. Okay. You hear yelling and uh, uh, you know the sounds of pain once again. This time you don't drop to a knee, get a headache, or your nose does not continue to bleed anymore. Please, please, stop, okay? It's not gonna make me go away. I don't know of anything that will. Definitely not that, but it is painful. It's wretchedly painful. I wish I could make you share my pain. Just a little bit more right now. So he's gonna like take all of his other levels, like just Max out his other spell slots and just leave his third level spells just for removal. Every curse. day. Every morning, he's just gonna be like, Wake up! Boom, boom, boom! <laughs> at night. Every day! At night, well, time to go to bed. Oh, wait, hang on. I got a fourth and a fifth level slot left. That's <laughs> two more. Boom, boom! <laughs> Look, pal. This is, this is life now. I'm not your pal, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've uh, kind of figured out the situation. I give you stuff, you don't cause me pain. If you want to keep causing me pain, I can take away, you know, the these these little uh, these little uh, perks you're getting out of the situation. But I figure, you know, if you're stuck with me, why not use me? No, no, no we can't. There's a there's a contract. <laughs> 
I'm just making it abundantly clear that I do not consent. <laughs> <laughs> no means no, sir. I do not consent to a search of my person or a grant of any powers. Let's go talk to the guildmaster about what options we might have where I might still be useful to the guild, <laughs> despite having both my arms amputated from the elbow down. <laughs> you don't make a man. <laughs> Two gun arms. <laughs> Look, now I have sacred flame. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh. Somatic components. Uh, so, yes. Uh, the rest of you will also wake up the next day. Let me know when you guys show up in the, uh, in the, in, in the, the dining hall. Yeah, the Were you passed room. out? <laughs> <laughs> so, for the, uh, whenever you all decide to come down to the main area, the, the tavern, the dining area, there is the table that you were all sitting at and drinking at last night has been cleaned. There's a berry sitting in each of the spots you were sitting last night just waiting for you. Hey. Except for the rest of the hall is decorated. Uh, Bartog is passed out, like been, oh, on on the table, just passed out. I'm on the table, laying on him. There's empty bottles of wine and kegs all over the place. It's there's a big sign above the door that says "Welcome, Clovis." It's really poorly written. There might be some like really crappy balloon to draw on it. There's also as much like decorative streamer stuff that we could put up. Um, we made another sign, a little little bigger, a little wider, but it says, you know. Mary Clovemas. <laughs> uh, we're, I'm, I am, at least last night, hyped about this. <laughs> I'm excited. Are you excited? I should be excited. This is a wonderful plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. <laughs> so, that's what you all see. You hear loud snoring. You're not sure if it's the druid or the bartender. <laughs> I'm just glad that Miser wasn't involved. Not these big hands. <laughs> uh, Orion comes down and sees all the decorations and everything. Uh, okay. Uh huh. Well, uh, I see that they were busy last night. <laughs> I think I'll have to have a little chat with Bartog about this one. I'm supposed to help contain this kind of situation, but I gave people a free pass last night, so I guess we'll just let it go. Uh, that said, let's all... Drill! <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everybody. Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, love what you did with the place. I mm, know. It wouldn't, wouldn't really throw him off if the ambush is actually a surprise party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really planning on throwing a, you know, uh, a uh, homecoming celebration or anything for the archers pop up and fire arrows that are trailing streamers and dropping confetti. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> mm. Well, uh, yeah. So uh, there's some good berries on the table for you. There, I'll have someone that's not unconscious bring out some some breakfast. And once you're all done getting yourselves together, uh, please meet me in the war room which is down the hall on the left. Sound good? Okay. Mm. Yeah. I assume everyone will uh, have some breakfast and or at least eat a good berry. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> and we'll cut over to the, fast forward over to the war room. I will go down the hall and to the right. <laughs> That's the bathroom. Let us all go. Oh, good. <laughs> Let us all go to the lobby and have ourselves a snack. <laughs> so, in the war room, I presume you all enter together. Uh, you enter. Orion is at the head of this table. On either side, you see the three different mentors that you were originally introduced to to choose from before. So Agatha, who you chose to be your mentor, 
uh, Styx and uh, Harrow. What the heck did I say? Harothi? Haroth? Haroth. Sorry. I uh, should spell more phonetically so I can read my own writing. <laughs> also, we have Osric at the table. What the... about Grumpy Mage? <laughs> Grumpy Mage? Oh, no, he's not here. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Pissy himself. <coughs> That's all I know, it's Grumpy Mage. <laughs> so yes, Osric, who's the dwarf that you saved from the Nine Hells. Hey, how many removed curses can you whip up? <laughs> Actually, that would be hilarious if you just if you just go get all the clerics, like as you can, be like, Line up. remove curses. <laughs> like all of us, just it's all gonna us. be hilarious for me. No one else is gonna get in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see. There's a cursed spirit bound to these bracers, and he says that you're not man enough to remove curse on it. <laughs> so we want to see just who's got the strongest remove curse can. Gosh, that'd be so funny. Like, and it just does all of us, and if like every single one of these is like attached to like a different part of him, so he's like walking, he'll say, he's like, ah, 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 <laughs> why? <laughs> I, I, ooh, that one felt good. <laughs> Oh, I didn't want to like this. <laughs> so... <laughs> this was a terrible idea! <laughs> Why did I give my enemies the ability to remotely inflict pain on me? It seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> I was going to say, do you relay any of this to us? Well, I will tell you that I did try the Room of Curse, Channel Divinity, just pumping raw, radiant energy into it. No, it's going to be a lesson. Watch what I can do! <laughs> it comes out of my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> it reaches over and puts the hand around your muscle. So anyway, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't like it, but it hasn't gotten rid of it yet. Doesn't like it? How do you know? Because it talked back. <gasps> I knew it. Beep beep beep. <laughs> oh, well, ask not. <clears throat> we have a lot of clarity here. <laughs> They, they, they say that uh, they're going to have fun with it. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Tomorrow, uh, once I get my spell slots back, if you want to give it a run. <laughs> it's not pleasant for either of you, but... <laughs> well, any any fun I can have with him. <laughs> yeah, funny if my smite hurt it. <laughs> So all of my third level spells for tomorrow are now gone. <laughs> <laughs> I 